Oh boy. What it do, E World? Crisscross and Wires back with another video. Today we're going to be starting on uh, my own 96 volt pack. Uh, I'm going to attempt to film this build from start to finish, even do live streams in, at certain times. Uh, can't keep the camera running all the time because some of this process is monotonous but whenever uh, I'm doing something of importance I will film that or like I said do it live all right first a little small disclaimer although I always always normally stress the importance of DIY doing it yourself uh, becoming knowledgeable about your own e-bike so that you can save yourself some money and not get jacked at every turn uh and also you know you should be knowledgeable so if you're out on the road and you break down you can get yourself going again so it is very important to know how all of these systems work and how to repair your own bike however when it comes to batteries that's the only thing I'm not going to recommend for everyone, okay? So, if you're not a really good craftsman, meaning uh, your work is not all that great, um, if you're halfway lazy, whereas though you're going to cut corners, if you're cheap and going to use the worst, cheapest materials. And if you're hard-headed, don't attempt to build a battery. Please. Alright? Because you can not only hurt yourself, but you can hurt those around you. Uh, you can not only burn yourself up, you can burn your family up, you can burn your next door neighbors up. You can burn your pets up. You can burn the entire neighborhood up, all right? One thing about this lithium is that once they catch on fire, they don't stop until all the energy is gone. They will continue to burn until every single drop of energy has uh, burned off, okay? Um, you can suppress it. You know, with a fire extinguisher, you can suppress it with water. But even water uh, triggers lithium. Sometimes it makes it worse. And uh, like I said, it will keep burning. Even if you throw one of these in the water, it's going to burn underwater. Yeah, that's how serious it is. So, you can, uh, you know, take some safety precautions. Like have fire extinguishers around, uh, buckets of water, a hose. Uh, I'm right here where I have access to my hose outside. So if a fire were to start while I was here, I would be able to uh, contain it, slow it down, and possibly extinguish it only because I have access to my water hose, which is right there. And uh, I'm like Johnny on the spot because I'm right here. But if it happens while I'm not right here, it's nothing I can do. All right. So you just got to be really safe about this, man. You got to have a lot of knowledge and understanding, man. If you don't understand how this stuff works, don't think you're going to sit down and build a battery. You can't, but it's not recommended because you're probably going to make a mistake. All right. And... There's no room for error when it comes to these batteries. That being said, that's my little disclaimer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to talk about is pack layout. The cell configuration. How the cells are orientated. And how current will flow through the pack and how the voltages add up all right series parallel circuits basically ohm's law okay now in the series circuit 
with cells, when you put cells in series, voltages add up. Current or capacity or discharge stays the same. All right, that's in series. In parallel, voltage stays the same. Capacity adds up. Discharge adds up. The amount of current flow adds up. Okay? Now, therefore, if you're making a 20S, and for the moment, this little section here is 20S 10P. The best way to have this pack configured for maximum current flow and I have to stress that because I've seen people alright first uh, we do know the difference between series and parallel in parallel you're putting cells together you're connecting all of their positives and all of their negatives together okay you're basically making a larger cell these 10 cells add up to one large cell. These are 10 4,500 milliamp hour cells in parallel, which is 10 4.5 amp hour cells in parallel, and they make up 45 amp hour. So this is 45 amp hour in capacity, all right, in voltage. The nominal voltage is only 3.6, all right, or 4.2 if it was fully charged. Now, in order to increase that voltage, we have to put this group of 10 cells that are in parallel, we have to put that in series with another group of 10 cells that are in parallel. Here's another group. Now, you could do it this way, electrically, the voltage will add up. However, it's the current flow. This is a no-go as far as current flow. You will not get maximum current flow putting it like this. Now, I've seen people take packs, put those 10 in parallel, another 10 in parallel, and they actually put them in series like that so this positive going to these negative which is in series which is going to give you seven uh seven point two volts however all the current is flowing through a single path All right, now, in order to get the current to go from the first stage to the second stage, right here after this 10th cell, this 10th cell, it would be a connection like that. That puts this group of cells in series with this group of cells. But you notice there's only one single path of current flow. All the amps that these cells can provide and produce it's all having to travel through this narrow piece of a uh, copper strip. That is not good for optimum current flow. Will it work? Yes, it will work. However, when you go to pull a massive amount of amps, you know what's going to happen? This copper strip is going to burn right where it connects. They'll burn every time when you pull us, you know, whatever amount of amps this single uh, piece of copper strip can handle it's going to burn right there now if you put them in series like this this group of cells all positive in series with this group of cells all negative but you're putting now this isn't wide enough this isn't long enough but just use your imagination that this was long enough this is the correct way to do it. Now, basically, it's like each one of these cells has 
its own uh, direction of current flow can travel to the next cell. But it's even better than that because it's all one solid piece. So they're all sharing this one solid piece. And all that current flow is moving through this to this next group of cells. But it's, it's that wide. It's not, it's not the same as that. By no means. All right. We're going to do the same thing over here. These positives of this 10 group of cells will go to the negative on the next group of cells. Like that. And underneath, this positive is going to go to this group of cells negative. Underneath like that and down the line. But if you do it in this snaking method, and uh, you know, I used to get in an argument with somebody back in the day when we both start building packs because he was doing it like this. And I used to tell him, that yes it will work but that pack will never you know be able to produce the correct amount of amps now i'm pretty sure they've learned over the time that i was right about that but anyway just make sure you get that straight first so obviously it'd be monotonous for me to keep showing you you know me putting the rest of these cells in here but we're gonna go get we're going to go ahead and finish this uh, 20S10P section. And uh, when I get to uh, welding or making these uh, electrical connections, then I'll return. And I'm just going to leave that at that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, setting this up with all the cells. And uh, after that, come back. And uh, we'll discuss some more on uh, how to attach and weld our, uh, our bus bars. And uh, you should know, if you're going to be doing copper nickel sandwich, obviously you need a welder with enough power to weld through 0.2 millimeter copper and uh, 0.15 or 0.1 nickel at the same time all right because we're not using any prefab bus bars uh, you will need a high power welder now I've already talked about prefab bus bars and why I don't use them and uh, I'm not gonna go over that again but uh, Maybe I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can understand why uh, I don't use those. Anyway, uh, this is just the first phase. And we'll be back. And we're going to get in a little deeper. And uh, also discuss what I discussed a long time ago. And... This conversation always, always is debated as when it comes to soldering versus welding. Now, they always going to be those old school guys. Oh, you shouldn't solder cells because the heat is going to damage the cells. 
And see, a lot of those old school guys in Facebook groups have no idea what they're talking about. For one thing, if you know how to solder, you solder so quickly on these cells that that heat never has time to reach the inner core. Even if it does, it will never be as hot as those cells actually passing high current internally. Do you know how hot these cells get when they're under a large amp load? When one of these cells is producing 50, 60 amps, when that 60 amps is passing through this cell, do you know how hot it gets internally from the inside and that heat uh, dissipates to the outside? Way hotter than this soldering iron touching the surface and that heat gets transferred to the inside of the cell. It doesn't get time to uh, get all the way to the internal parts of this uh, cell. It doesn't. I've tested that with a heat gun and everything. I mean, when I, if I solder this copper to this cell, it takes me two seconds to make that connection, if that. And yeah, it'll be hot for that second or two and it will quickly cool down that heat will never reach the inner core of that cell now uh, I used to say all the time that for my own packs I will be soldering because a soldered connection is a much better connection than a weld and I'll, I'll debate that any day with anyone all right, welds are subject to uh, uh, oxidation and resistance and water ingress when a soldered connection uh, basically is, is shielding itself from all of those things. I mean, uh, water ingress and rust or oxidation cannot penetrate solder you know when you solder it 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 forms that it, it has a, a tight bond over top of that connection where none of that is going to affect that direct connection trust me it's not that's the best connection you can make is a soldering uh soldered connection so i don't know if i'm going to do that on this pack the reason why that's done uh, in most manufacturers is because all they care about is pr productivity. They don't care about uh, which is better, which is going to have the better performance. They want to build as many packs as possible in as little time as possible. So productivity at the same time. People think because manufacturers use, they, uh, you know, weld, that that's the best method. And it is not. So, who knows what I'm going to do for my own pack. I prefer to solder. But uh, just because uh, I may be looking to build this pack in a record amount of speed too, I may weld it as well and uh, not like it's going to be bad because I got a good welder now but just just to touch on that fact you ever see me solder in a cell best believe it's going to be right done the right way peace